Welcome to Do- Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice. You're going to put that in there, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. It's staying in. And the pause. I'm leaving the pause in there that you realize yeah, like, that you... Oh, I go, welcome. I sounded like Bobby Brady there <laughs> when he's going through changes. Uh, hey, Russia, this is uh, Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Uh, hey, you know what song I've been thinking? about today um, a britney spears song oops i did it again that's the one <laughs> i figured you because i know you're a big britney spears fan so i figured Love you the would spears. know spearhead go uh that's not uh, are they called are her fans called spearheads I'm, I'm i'm claiming it now like believers like justin bieber up there believers yeah yeah okay all right, that's cool. I didn't know you were into that i was joking but now we know you actually are a britney spears fan uh so yeah we we uh we we did a thing Mm-hmm. And then and, we did well, a thing again. Whoever was doing social media today, we won't say who it was, but somebody was doing social media today, and they did a thing, mm. uh, and uh, which we were fine with. It was good. We, we were what, for today. It. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was you that did that. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter who it was. The point is, like, we both bear the responsibility for social media posts. <laughs> okay. I like that. When it's all messed up, it's me. No, it's not, I didn't say oh, it was no, you. No, I like that. When it's all good, it's all the stuff you do, and yeah. what's messed up, it's like, uh, uh, it's either fofo or. Hey, we both bear responsibility. Well, I was oh, no, no, no. We both bear responsibility. I, I was going to say it was Steve McCoy, but you, you, you ruined it. So, yep. okay. So now, yeah. So, uh, we, we did a thing and, um, lots of questions, which are good. Lots of positive feedback, which is good. And I would go ahead and say lots of, uh, lots of hate. Okay. I'm getting texts about horror movies. Hang on. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We got lots of hate. Uh, definitely a lot of hate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and some of that is, you know, I understand because, uh, you know, the nature of uh, of the of the tweet and the post on Facebook. Uh, and just our culture, t- you know, today, yeah. our well, Christian the, culture today. So we were we were we were intentionally uh, I love Calvinists. We were intentionally vague, especially the young ones. We were intentionally vague. And, uh, you know, we kind of threw it out there for questions. We'll explain that in a little bit. Um, so we got some pushback. And before we get into all this, um, a couple things. One, we were going to do a bonus episode, but then we realized to address all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But then we realized, oh, well, we, we we're, we're scheduled to drop an episode tomorrow, anyways. Yeah, we'll so, push that one back. So yeah. we have an episode about Josh Harris. That'll be a Friday episode. That will we'll, bonus episode. Yeah, yeah, that'll be the bonus like that. that drops on Friday. Okay, so, um, and, and, so number one, this is not the bonus episode, but you know, kind of is. Uh, number two, we actually don't enjoy talking oh, yeah. about all this stuff. I, I know you think we do. Yeah, I, I absolutely th- hate this. This is not our focus. This is it's just not, not our thing, man. Our and focus is doctrine and devotion. Our focus is experiential theology. It's really what we, we're going for. Confessionalism. Yeah. And so we we veer off on, on and hit various topics, but hopefully from that reformed experiential theology mm-hmm. perspective. And, uh, and then, of course, we'll talk about various things as they're relevant or hot or people are asking a lot of questions. We get into that stuff, um, but it's not our focus. And uh, we don't intend for this to be our focus. No, no, no. It, 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 I mean, one of the things, though, is that it, it costs us listeners. Oh, yeah. People unsubscribe. It's not. Yep. Listen, we don't want to do this because, you know, what we don't want to do. We don't want people to stop listening to the podcast. We yep. would like to encourage as many people as possible. And if they stop listening to the podcast, we can't encourage them that way. Mm-hmm. So that's like, oh, that's a shame. So if we if we just were going to do what's best for the podcast, we wouldn't talk about these things. Yeah, but we'd, we'd like to tickle the ears then. Yeah, we would. Uh, be, Jimmy has like these super thick earlobes. Yeah, they're like uh, they're like little bicycle tires. All right, actually, don't talk about earlobes because like, then you got to um, explain how you know that and why you, you can see them and why you uh, uh, massage them. Well, if I don't, then the calluses build up. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, we you know so it's not fun for us. It's it's not a thing. It's not a strategy for us. It's just this is happening. Um, and you know what else? It it actually makes some friends pull away. Yeah. You know, some friends yeah. will pull away from us over this, and yet we feel like we we need to address it. We actually feel like we we have to, and we do because, okay, part of it is was we don't feel beholden to anybody. Yeah, like we're we're not you know paid by a, a seminary that's saying you you can't say X Y and Z. Uh, you yeah. know, we're not in a particular group. We're not in a parachurch kind of a thing, or in some yeah. sort of leadership. Uh, uh, and our, and even our board, our church, you know, our elders, right? I think they give us flexibility here yeah. 
uh, they, they held us accountable for our our tone and our yeah. manner and and what we what we talk about. I'm not going to say that we that you know they they have no say in right. that because uh, as brothers in Christ they hold us accountable. But we we tend to do what we feel is yeah. I think how we're being led. We are not speaking for Redeemer Fellowship here. Mm. We are speaking for ourselves. And um, and and, and here's so. You know, we're addressing these issues and this particular issue with Founders Ministries and the Synodoc that they're releasing, focusing on the trailer that was released. Um, and the, one of the reasons we do, we have focused on this l- lately is because we tend to focus on our problems more than other people's problems, yeah. right? No, yeah, we, we tend to talk about the reform community over uh, Arminians, right? Yeah, like, okay, so we disagree with the Arminians. We think they're wrong. Yeah. Okay, all right. So there are people that's their job is to address Arminian issues, but we focus on on the reformed community more uh, in general. Yeah. And the same thing like with we we talk more about Baptists than we do Presbyterians. Right. Because this that, is our tribe. This is, is our people. This is our, yeah. This is our group. And so we we feel like, hey, instead of sitting there trying to uh, clean the other side of the street, we should be first be looking at uh, at our own and looking at what's going on within our group of people. Go ahead. Look, it sounds like Jordan Peterson over here. Make your bed. All right. Take yeah. care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Yeah. And I, I and, I, and I believe that. Right. So what we want to do is we want to encourage people to 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 know Jesus, to follow Jesus, to live like Jesus. That's really our emphasis. And that does intersect with these issues. Oh, the, oh intersectionality. No, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> so, Joe, we. We, you put out a tweet today. Uh, we put out a tweet, right? Uh, Doc and Devo. And it's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it, okay? Sure. Okay. It says, half of the board of uh, At Founders Men is suddenly missing from their website. Perhaps it's not just social justice warriors and liberals who object to founder strategy and conduct regarding their upcoming synodoc. And then you had some screenshots there. One is the current uh, board team. The other is, it says authors. And that's because if their their website is not really uh, easy to get the way they've got it set is you can't get it all in one because they do it vertically rather than how they have it here. So we had to go to the wayback machine. Had to go to the wayback machine. Go to the team, uh, and there you've got it. There now these people are still going to be listed as authors because they've got a lot of content yeah. on there. So the same authors. So there were six people on the board. Yep. And um, as of I think last night or this morning, but very recently, three men are no longer on. That web page. Yeah. Right. So that's um who who is that? Tom Hicks. Yeah. Uh yeah, Tom Hicks, uh Fred Malone. Fred Malone. And a uh, a brother named John. I I just don't know his last but it's, name. But it's John. Or is it J O N. It's not J O H. Yeah, J O N or yeah, J O N, it's John Lee. John Lee. Uh Bruce Lee's uh grandson. So <laughs> So those guys are no longer listed. Um and so the tweet was really designed to point out a public change on the founder's website and mm-hmm. leadership. Uh, it's public. It's out there. People are going to start to notice. Now, here's the thing. Every, everybody was saying, like, why are you assuming? Why are you jumping to conclusions? Why are you stirring the pot and all that stuff? Um, we know why those men are no longer on the board. Okay, so we're not guessing. But it's not our place to tell their story or to speak for them. Yeah. We're just not going to do that. So – um, we believed what it's just like, it's a good time to point it out in light of, especially in light of the rhetoric that's been coming out about people who object and push back to the documentary trailer, especially yeah, because they, they suggest that those who didn't like the trailer are liberal, yeah. anti-Calvinist, et cetera. Right. And yeah, so they, they, they kind of lump us all in together saying, okay, so you're not for us. You must be against us. And so if, since you're against us, you're on this side of the aisle. Yeah. Only Jesus gets to say that, by the way. Okay, <laughs> you're either for me or you're against me. <laughs> Knock it off. Sometimes it's a, it's a bit more nuanced there. Um, so yeah, we we thought like let's go ahead and and, and point it out and uh, and get people thinking, get people uh, you know talking about it until because uh, people are going to notice it anyways uh, until people are going to go ahead and share their story and say here here's what's going on. Yeah, you know, and I, that's, I, that's, I'm sure at some point uh, founders is going to yeah founders will say something. I, or those I, I highly yeah. I, I find it. I'd find it really uh, odd. I'll say odd, troublesome if they just kind of neglected to speak on that. Yeah, I mean, listen, they haven't had time to, so I'm assuming that yeah, they're gonna. Everybody's busy, and um, so we shared a development. That's what happened. We shared a development, um, and I think it's fair to say uh, at this point, <laughs> it, it should be pretty obvious. But we are not the only reformed guys who think the trailer itself was. A bad idea. Yeah. Uh, and not just problematic. We believe that at points it swayed into sin. 
through bearing false witness against yep. some, yeah. not all, and by tarnishing the reputations of some, not all. But, but we want to be really clear here, mm-hmm. right? Um, we are. We don't hate founders. We no. We know that Tom Askell, for example, is a godly man. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, Tom and Jared. We know that Tom Nettles. Yeah. Oh yeah, spe- yeah. I mean, I don't want to say especially as if the other guys yeah, aren't. Especially but Tom Nettles. Like those guys are godly <laughs> men. We don't doubt their sincerity. Yep. We don't doubt their aim or their 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 intent. Mm-hmm. We we really do think that they're they're trying to do something good. But the way that this has played out so far is to us as Reformed Baptists who are not egalitarian, who are are not cultural Marxists, who uh, are not into sec- intersectionality, uh, we have a problem with it. And, um, you know, people are, people are asking like, so, you know, like, like, for example, a lot of people are asking like, so if you're, if you're talking about tone and strategy, because we don't like the strategy in dealing with this particular problem, mm-hmm. what would your strategy be? How would, how would you guys do it? Yeah, people are asking us that. And, and you know, we're more than happy to share our perspective on that, Joe. Yeah. And But first, I, I do want to give an encouragement, or at least I want to encourage our listeners that, you know, with things happening over at, at Founders, right? Like, these are men that um, I believe uh, have all ministered together for many years. These are men that undoubtedly have a love for each other. Yep. A love They're, for God. A love for God. Love for his church. Love for his church. I am sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that there is some mourning happening over there. Over over how this is playing out, over the board changes, however that, you know, Correct. played and itself so out. I want to say that, honestly, I want to encourage us to be praying for those involved. Mm-hmm. And we really, personally, my prayer is reconciliation here. Right. I really do have a hope and prayer that, that founders will... Uh, these men would come back on the board. I really do yeah. hope so. I really do hope so that they come back on the board because I really, I truly believe that a unified founders, I think is is good. I think it's good for the church. I think it's good for the denomination. I think it's good for Reformed Baptists that, because there's voices there, because obviously like the, it's okay to disagree. We, we, we understand that. We understand that. Right. And so that's healthy. And I think there's a balance there. And I think these men all together is stronger. And I think our denomination is stronger when they're unified. And so I think that's an important thing to say, Jimmy, because oftentimes when we're critical of someone and we say, pray for them, what a lot of us think is pray for them to change their mind. Like, okay, yes, that's fine. We should pray that people who are wrong, if you think they're wrong, you're going to pray that they change their mind Um, and pray that, you know, things would be healthier and better and whatever. But let's not forget to do exactly what Jimmy's saying. Pray that um, that relationships, uh, if they have been soured, Mm -hmm. um, are repaired, that uh, if there can be reconciliation and unity uh, and a good path forward, that that would happen. To be ministering together again. I, I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Yeah. So pray for that. I think that's a good, that's a good word. Well, one of the, one of the things that Jimmy and I talk a lot about uh, in light of this is how you correct people, right? Because a lot of people are saying, um, you know, online to us, like, well, you don't think we should correct people. You don't think we should call people out. Obviously we do because we've been calling out founders on yeah. their strategy. So, and we're not afraid to call people out. We tend to focus on our people more than other people, right? People that are closer to us theologically. Um, but yes, we absolutely think that there is a necessary time and place yeah. to call out uh, false teachers on the one hand, yep. but also erring brothers and sisters. And of course, there's a time, right? There's a time when an erring brother or sister will become a false teacher like a true heretic. Yep. That can happen. But nevertheless, there is a difference between calling out false teachers and calling out erring brothers and sisters. So we need to be, we need to consider who we're correcting Mm -hmm. so that we know how we should be correcting and the approach that we should be taking moving forward. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about calling out false teachers, right? So I know, uh, you know, a lot of us in the reform tradition are quick to call out the very popular and influential false teachers that preach another gospel. Yep. Um, People think Joel Osteen, perhaps they think um, Uh, Bethel, Bethel, They, they, they dial in on not mega churches, but mega churches that are heretical in yep. nature. Uh, leaders, uh, teachers, preachers, uh, wolves, right? That, in fact, in Matthew 7 5, it says, uh, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. I mean, 
we affirm that there are false teachers out there and yep. it's sometimes you don't know that they're false teachers you know because they, they they present themselves uh, very pretty Christian. well they look like they should be part of the discussion they should be part of the group yeah and so jesus says beware be careful pay attention uh because they are dangerous and you you have to beware of them but the scripture doesn't only say beware the scripture calls us to actually engage doesn't it yeah yeah, it says Second Timothy four three to four. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Mm. So knowing that, knowing that that's yes. coming, knowing that the wolves are are there are potentially wolves within, we have to deal with the wolves so that they do not lead others astray. These are the stakes, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously the glory of God, right? But it's the glory of God in the church that's really in jeopardy here, right? You're not going to take away from God's glory. Mm. God's glory is. But God's glory in the church and in the life of believers, like this is at risk because people will be drawn to the false teachers. That's right. It's going to sound good. It's going to feel right. You know, it's going to... It's going to give me my best life now. And the, what it says, we'll, we'll accumulate for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on our on our podcasts, you know, on our, on our blog feed, like... Like we'll, we're going to accumulate them for us and, and surround ourselves with them if we're not careful. And we wander away from the truth and into myths, tr untruths, That's lies, right. things that sound good, good story. Um, and, you know, man, listen, false doctrine oftentimes really appeals to the worldliness inside of us. Yeah. Like, so, like so oftentimes it's because it's, it's, it's easier. The oh, stakes yeah. are not as high. Yeah. There's not as much of an, uh, of a commitment, right? Or it actually just, it, it already kind of tickles our ears in the sense that it, it, uh, it's already kind of going with what I wanted to believe anyways. It's a good thing. Your ears are so thick and calloused. You can't no, no, tickle no, they're your not ears. callous because you've been tickling them. Well, one of them is dead. One of your ears doesn't Stop even work. Stop it. Why are you going to talk about that? I forgot. It's your left ear. Jimmy's Don't left ear doesn't it. work. Stop it. Um, this is why I had a, a, a special symbol embossed onto his uh, his nameplate at the cigar lounge to indicate that he is hearing me? impaired. Why are you? I want me? people to know. I want you know that way people you know give you you know some space. Um, so, anyways, listen. It matters because the impact is on people. In yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 5, it says, If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, notice this, good doctrine connected to piety. Mm. That person is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, slander, and suspicions. Evil suspicions. Constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and depraved of the truth, deprived of the truth, uh, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. So this, th these, these false doctrines that are a denial of Christ, his, his life, death, and resurrection, his lordship, godliness, and piety. Yeah. Like those teachings uh, create dissension, division. They shatter the church when they aren't checked, when they aren't, you know, when they aren't resisted and, and addressed. That's right. That's right. And at second Peter two, uh, one to three, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction and many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep. So these false prophets will among, are, can be among us that we've, and just as there will be false teachers among you and they will secretly, secretly. bring Secretly. That's the danger, right? So again, here, I'm sympathetic to the concern. That's right. That the idea has. That, they, yeah, that we have to address these issues, that we have to bring what's in darkness into light and expose it and yep. deal with false teaching. Don't disagree there because listen, most of the time, you know, the devil shows up looking good. The devil doesn't show up looking like the devil. Mm, right, the devil, devil does not show up looking like Joe Thorne. No, because everybody be like, no, I'd be like, that's a devil. That that, that that's that, an evil goblin. That's a that's a little, uh, little that goblin. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. gremlin. Um, so yeah, I mean, we get it. I'm sympathetic to that. And so when you know you have people that are you know subtly bringing in doctrines that are damnable or doctrines that are dangerous. Uh, to the faith, I get it. You you have to address it. And these false teachers. Now these are these are not just erring brothers. We're here. We're talking about false teachers. Yeah, unorthodox, no gospel. These are heretics. 
And so their condemnation from long ago is not idle. Like these are people mm. that are set apart for this. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, we got another warning. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. And so when, you know, Founders is talking about things like, um, oh, uh, intersectionality, for example, mm -hmm. um, where you're no longer treating uh, people as individuals, but parts of a group, and then they're either judged or evaluated or valued based on uh, a, a newly uh, prescribed uh, in interpretation or understanding of that group. Uh, that, that's a dangerous thing, and it, and it has a lot of implications. And so, you know, that's a, that's a philosophy that comes from the world. It's not according to scripture. And by the way, I, I, had, some, uh, I had some guys ask me on Twitter today, it was hard to, to respond to it all because, you know, we got jobs, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, I've got that J-O-B pastoral stuff going on. But um, they were like, well, you know, where do you ever address some of these issues? Do you address it on the podcast? And I said, well, yeah, we've talked about some of that stuff. And they said, well, can you show me the links? I said, no, because I wouldn't know where they are. I, yeah, we we have hundreds of episodes. I don't sit there and catalog it. We're we, over 300 episodes. Yeah, we, we, we record and we talk and we post it and then we get to do our jobs and families. Yeah. So I don't know. But they said, what about your sermons? And I said, well, sure. You can, again, you can search the sermon database. But I did point to one series, a short series called Don't Go There, where I talk about race and um, uh, sexual identity mm -hmm. and all kinds of things. So we'll link to that in the show notes so that people uh, can see some of what you know we have said here at Redeemer. Galatians 1, 6 to 9, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Mm. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. See right there? Mm -hmm. These these false teachers distort the gospel of Christ. And that's that's the you know, that's the thing here. There, there, there's an intentionality there. Yeah. There's an intentionality of distorting the gospel of Christ. But even if we are... If we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. So, I mean, th these are the strongest words that we have. Paul says that person is damned. Yep. That that person, it's 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 like, it's, it's an, he calls it another gospel, right? Because – you know, it is a it is a teaching that is supposed to save, and it's it's oftentimes going to invoke the name of Jesus. Yep. But they've twisted it all. You don't you can't get rid of Jesus. You're not going to have a lot of influence in the church. But you keep that name Jesus, but you redefine everything. Talk about his purpose. You know, for example, you talk about his atonement being one of 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 example or moral government instead of you know uh, vicarious penal atonement something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get into real trouble. Now these are just a, a few scripture references that we pulled to demonstrate yeah. that the Bible is very clear. You have to call out false teachers, um, and so you you get the picture here. We we believe you should do that. You have to do that, but we have, we want to be we want to be really clear. False teachers are not those Christians who are getting some of their doctrines wrong. Yeah. We, in fact, let's just say this. Uh, all of us are wrong in our doctrine somewhere. Yeah. Right? We probably don't know where it is. I, I don't know. That'd be pretty arrogant for you to think that you're not. Yeah. I have, no, there's no error in my theology. Really, oh. bro? Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, you know what? I want you to sit down with Jim Renahan and let's find out. Oh. <laughs> Jim the man Renahan. <laughs> let's find out. Let, let's find out if there's no error. Okay. Is there error in Jim's in Jim's theology, though? Uh, go ahead. Say it, say it on air. Say it. No, no I'll say, say it. it. You say it. Then you got to go to Barcelos. <laughs> <laughs> when you find error in Renahan's theology, go to Barcelos. <laughs> and when you find Richard error there, uh, throw up your hands. Uh, <laughs> wave them in the air like you just don't care. Because Everybody's wrong somewhere in their theology. Somewhere, right? Maybe it's just in aspects of application or some mm -hmm. of the principles. And so... Brothers and sisters are going to uh, be wrong at times, and yeah. that is different. So, Jimmy, once again, uh, if we're going to summarize what we're talking about here, when you correct false teachers, false teachers, not just Aaron brothers, be biblical, right? Use yeah. that Bible. You're not going to you're not going to win anyone yep. to the truth if you're not using the Absolutely. sword. And truth. that's one of the things I agree with. Like when Tom Askell, right, mm -hmm. during their their uh, their podcast, is he said, "Come at with come at me with the Bible, or don't come at me at all." Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. He's absolutely 110% well, it, it, right. It's an unfair fight because if you ain't got the Bible and Tom does, you're going to lose. Yeah. Uh, right? That's right. And uh, So you want to be biblical. I, I mm -hmm. think you want to be direct. Yeah, be very direct. You know, don't just like make, make these weird implications and be like, oh, you know, 
Like, get to the heart of what we're talking about, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, you want to be thorough. Be really thorough, yeah. I mean, because if, if, if you're not thorough when addressing false teachers and heresy, uh, you're leaving room mm-hmm. uh, for those heresies. Yeah, to... don't have wiggle room in that. Another thing is, is when you're addressing uh, heretics and false teachers, avoid ad hominem. You know, mm. don't. Yeah, so don't, for Steve McCoy that's listening. Yeah, don't. Oh, oh that, that means don't attack uh, the person, attack their ideas. Gotcha. Yeah, so okay, get, you, you got that, me, Steve? but now Steve might now get Now Steve it. will know, and he's now better for it. And the then, more you know. So avoid ad hominem, but, but focus on the truth and focus on the lie, right? So you, a lot of people are, are, are happy to say like, well, I don't need to know all of what counterfeit bills look like if I'm just really familiar with the real dollar bill. The and real I just 20. sit there and I, I can feel it. I, that's I, I, how I bank just, tellers, know. that's how they train yeah. for counterfeit is they spend hours and, and weeks just playing, just they, handling except, real money. Except they have that mark, that marker that they use. Yeah, I wonder and, why that uh, marker is there yeah. if they just know why they feel. But the, the reality is, is, yes, you want to be, the most important thing is to be thoroughly familiar with the truth. Um, but you also want to be familiar with the lie. You want to know that because you have to be able to represent the opposing view, whether it's false doctrine, heresy, or whether it's just errant doctrine that a brother, you have to know their view well so that you can represent it properly. Because if you can't represent it properly, you don't know it properly and you cannot therefore deconstruct it and offer something better. So that's the the big picture on addressing or correcting false teachers and heretics. So then what about correcting brothers and sisters in Christ? We don't do that, Jimmy. We don't believe in that. We just, (laughs) we we, uh, we don't believe correcting brothers and sisters. No, no. Well, maybe we do because uh, people started calling us, Doctrine, devotion, and discernment. Oh, that was they so said we're sad. discernment bloggers. That was like that was like the saddest part of my day. It was sad and it was funny though. Like they got us. It was good. Like no, I could, no, no, I know. I'm like, oh, that's a good burn. Yeah, I, I tip my hat to them. Yeah, that's like yeah. the one thing they could have done that mm-hmm. made me feel like. Uh-uh. They, did you see the picture they put up of you and me and uh, Tijuana Smalls? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they put you and me and Tijuana Smalls. If you don't know who Tijuana Smalls is, oh. he's the worst of the worst of discernment bloggers. Um, yeah, so they, they were like, look at you guys going all discernment. It's like, uh, uh, that's not what we want to do. It's not what we're trying to do. Uh, but it was good funny. One, yeah. Good one, Matt Carabiner. Car, 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 carabin? Car, what it, caramel? Carabin. Carabinini. That's Benzini. what he said. It's like it's, Benino. He, he's like, in that video, he did the video. It's like, oh, yo, it's, uh, it means Italian police. Carabinini or something. I'm like, uh, Carabiner. Which is funny. No one respects the Italian police either. Do they even have guns? I don't know what they have over there. They have, they, they have a sash. They have a sash. All right. They have a leather sash. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No love for the sash. Beauty pageant, people wear sashes. Kings and princes wear sashes. And Italian police. Apparently. Apparently, they're so pretty. All right. So um, when we're talking about correcting brothers and sisters, we're talking about um, an in-house issue. We're talking yeah. about people that we know – Love Jesus, right? Love the word. That's right. Uh, people that love the church, but people who have a mistake in their thinking, a mistake in their theology, and uh, those issues need to be addressed. Now, what what is hot right now, what is popular right now are the issues of race and racism, sexual assault, uh, and sexual abuse cover-ups. Um, we're talking about- Toxic leadership. Oh, uh, yeah. Egalitarianism. Uh, Unhealthy complementarianism. Wokeness. Yep. Wokeness, brokenness. Uh, social justice. Yep. Uh, intersectionality. It, it keeps look, going on. Look, yeah, there's there's a whole lot of things. And, and for the record, okay, um, you, if, if you want to hear my whole view on race, you can listen to the sermon in that series I was talking about. Um, but people, people will use and misuse the concept of race uh, both uh, on both ends of the spectrum. Right, yeah. and they will use it to bind people's consciences in an unbiblical, uh, totally unbiblical way. And of course, racism. Uh, we're we're against the misuse of the concept of race. Uh, racism is, of course, a sin and an evil that is still alive and well today. Yeah. If liberalism hasn't died, mm-hmm. neither is racism. Okay. So let's not pretend like, and I'm not saying that 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 founders is specifically pretending. No, that, no, yeah, but we're there talking are, just but there in are general. people. This there are people out there like racism ain't no thing. You know who says that? The only people that I'm not the only people, most of the people that are saying that are usually white people that aren't really uh, feeling the impacts of racism uh, because it's not as likely to be felt uh, by white people. Yeah. So, so I mean, we, we yeah. want to be very clear on this, right? Like we we do believe the issues should be addressed and that it's careless not to address these issues. Yep. Uh, egalitarianism. Yep. Uh, 
social justice. Yeah. We, we believe in justice. And again, it all comes down to how you define things, right? So can you define social justice in a good way? Sure. I don't like a modifier before justice. Okay, that's fine. But understand where people are coming from. So maybe they're not heretical. Maybe they're using the term. Maybe they're using the term inappropriately. Yeah. But the concept of social justice as it is popularly playing out in the world is broken and it is dangerous and it is – I think missing the mark. Yeah. So we've, we've talked about a lot of these things. Um, they are worthy issues to be addressed. But Jimmy, how how do we correct brothers and sisters? And how is that different from the way we would correct a false teacher? Yeah, I mean, uh, Galatians 6, 1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watching yourself lest you too be tempted. So your your role here in correcting your, your brother and sister in their error is to restore them back. Right. And so you come at them in the spirit of gentleness. Super aggressiveness. Oh, I mean, yeah. No, no. Gentleness. 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 Because is, watch, keep watching yourself lest you too be tempted. Yeah. So it, your sin in coming off aggressively mm-hmm. instead of gently. It's not just that you might wind up buying into their garbage. Uh, you can cultivate your own garbage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I always love people like, well, remember Paul corrected Peter. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 again, brothers and sisters can have hard words for each other. Yes, we go to them directly. Joe and we I talk have to hard them. words for each other all the time. I don't know about all all the time. The time. No, I, all the time. Come on now, stop it. All not all the time. How often do we argue? Every other day, uh, only because we are not with each other every day. That's right. Okay, <laughs> um, Matthew eighteen, right? You guys know this. Matthew eighteen fifteen through seventeen. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you've gained a brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Now, I know that this is on church discipline. Yeah. Yeah. We understand the context. The the, the principle here, though, is you deal with people directly whenever you can. And uh, and sometimes you can't. Uh, But even those... So there's a time to, to address people directly and even privately. There's a time to address people publicly. And sometimes things are automatically public, right? Things are being published out there. It's not a private issue. Um, so if you can go to them, cool, but specifically uh, privately, that's great. But you can't always do that. And you don't always have to do that. It sort of depends on the context. But the idea here is that you're going to this person uh, privately, uh, publicly. You're going to them uh, with a, a group of witnesses to appeal to them to change. Yeah. Right. Not just to prove them wrong. Not just to win an argument. Right. Not uh, just to be right. Not just to be on top and to, right. to look like the superior believer. It's like, I win every argument that you and I have, but That's I'm not, not always true. right. Yeah. I win you every argument. I win every, every, I'm so good at arguing and I win every one. And uh, it doesn't mean I'm right. So I can admit that. I can admit that I'm not always right. I'm just always winning. No, nope, neither one. <laughs> <laughs> Titus 3, 10 to 11. As for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with them. Knowing that such a person is warped and sinful, he is self-condemned. So yeah. this is that you're going to them in gentleness. Mm-hmm. You're going to them. You're trying to restore them. And multiple you, appeals. Multiple, multiple appeals. And then, and then that's when you say, okay. Wipe your hands. Yeah. So, and there's two levels of that, right? Some people are persisting in false doctrine and it's not a damnable heresy. It's not leading people away from the gospel and you can work with them and work with them. And at some point you're just going to have to say, all right, well, I'm I'm done trying here. I'm going to focus on other things. But this also, these last two uh, passages speak to the issue that some people continue and go farther and farther until Mm -hmm. they're in a real bad way. And it's very dangerous. Like which one? Like which one what? Oh, I thought you said the next passage. The previous two. The oh, ones gotcha, in Matthew sorry. 18 and well, Titus 3 and then in 1 Timothy 5. But, yeah. It says, as for those who persist in sin, so we're hitting it again, uh, rebuke them in the presence of all so that the rest may stand in fear. So again, we, we're sharing these passages because j- when you're correcting your brother or sister, you're doing so gently. You're doing so with the aim of, of helping them to see, to be restored, uh, whether it's a moral or a philosophical or a theological idea. Uh, the aim is restoration. Yes. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that it isn't public. It doesn't mean that um, it isn't serious. And it doesn't mean that others shouldn't be warned about it. We absolutely should. James 5, my brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, 
Let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So again, this is that whole goal with the gentleness is to restore them. And so these brothers and sisters that have erred and have that have the gone, we continue, right? We continue uh, to to reach out to them. We continue to pray for them. We mm-hmm. continue with the hope that there would be restoration. They would they would they would see. They would repent, uh, and that they would be restored. And and here's like what I find discouraging. A lot of times when a, a person or a group will set their sights on an erring brother, they come out both guns blasting. Yeah, and they will say, "No, no, no! I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to protect the church. I'm trying to win the church." But they're not trying to win that specific individual. Uh, I, I feel like. I'm trying to protect the church from buying into it, these lies, but it comes off like I have forsaken the people that have already bought into these lies. Yeah. When the aim should be, no, I want to win them. Like, I'm going to protect our church. I'm going to protect our people. That's what we do here at Redeemer. We protect our people from false doctrine. It's one of the callings that we have as pastors. Um, but we also want to win people who believe those false doctrines. We yep. don't just want to like put up the wall and, and have a defensive posture. Uh, we really want to go in and, you know, seal team six that stuff, right? I want to go in there and and rescue these people that have believed foolish things. What's another one, Jimmy? Like uh, 2 Timothy uh, 4.2. A lot of uh, all the preachers know this one. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of seasons. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. What? Patience? Yeah. So uh, everybody likes to see. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. Yeah, bro. Um, Patiently. See, this is the thing. People generally don't turn on a dime. And the, and, and the th- theological development, just like faith, grows over time. Uh, isn't like, isn't like some kind of punctuated equilibrium where you go from like you know uh, this minimal uh, amount of growth to yeah. a, a, this perfectionistic sort of uh, experience. Um, so you got to be you. So we have to be willing and ready to end the communication of God's word, reprove, rebuke, and exhort. But we've got to do so patiently, yeah. teaching again with the aim of bringing those people into the light of God's word. That's and, what we and, want. And as someone that at, at various stages of my mm. growth have aired many stages, Va- I said Ma- various, but many various stages, several various. I am thankful. I am thankful. You're welcome for, uh, You're it was for you. Nope. Oh, nope. Oh, okay. For the, for the men that patiently, that were so patient with me that yeah. sat there would meet with me, and would preach the word to me, right? Yeah. Would meet with me and just say, look at scripture to me. Look at what it says. Let's talk about this. And just with like an earnestness. And they, they were they were trying there to to win me back, yeah. to win me, to say, no, no, there's error here, son. You need to like, let's look at this together. See why. And yeah. I just, I'm so thankful for those men. Man, I had a, I had a professor. So shout out Dr. Uh, Jay Pastor, Thorne. Nope. Leland Botsit, Aerosmith Baptist Church. In uh, Port Alberni, British Columbia. Thank you, brother. Hey, somebody up there knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's nice to hear. Well, like he's from, he is from Minnesota. Oh, that's why. <laughs> so okay. He's from Minnesota. Yeah, my, my, he's America. <laughs> America. <laughs> but thank you, Dr. Botsit. Man, I had uh, I had this professor, this Old Testament professor, Dr. Paul Wegner uh, in Bible college, taking him for uh, Isaiah. And, uh, you know, Bible college is a lot like seminary, but the students are dumber. And um, <laughs> Why? because they are there, we're, we're all dumber. We're it's undergrad, you know, younger, dumber. No, but they're all so, ready to plant a church. So they think they are. <laughs> so we're in Isaiah. Right. And so the thing that really bothers me about seminary and Bible college uh, is like the arrogance of a lot of the students and the way that they say things to the professors. Yeah. So like I can remember Dr. Tom Nettles. The reason I went to Southern Seminary, Dr. Tom Nettles uh, would encounter somebody saying something really dumb or being some student being self-indulgent and just being like, oh, hmm, you know, I'm wondering. And they would just like, like the, say, hmm, you know, that's some, exact. Mm, they just want to hear themselves talk. Mm, and, yeah, some, mm, indubitably. And Dr. Nettles was always gracious and patient and kind and like so like, like, you know, he was he was very patient with them. And I wanted Dr. Nettles to be like. All right. Does anybody have a good question? That's what I wanted Dr. Nettles to say, but he would never do that because he's a good and godly man. Um, but I had this professor in Bible college, Dr. Paul Wegner. And when a student would start to go down a particular line of thought when we're doing the exegesis, and if they were getting into like a, a bad doctrine, some bad theology, some wonky hermeneutics, he would literally, like his eyes would get big and his hands would go up and he'd go, whoa, whoa, whoa be careful. And it, it would, it was almost like 
there's a big rock about to fall on the student's head. And he was like, oh, look out, look out, be careful. Because <laughs> you're, about, you're about to get crushed. Listen, if you go down that path, there's there's poison down there. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you. And I, I just, I love that, that, um, that there, there are men that take their time and care to not just yell uh, and, and condemn, but to warn and, and to lead. Mm-hmm. How about 2 Thessalonians 3, 13 and 15? As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him, that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. So even here, mm-hmm. when, when a brother is erring and going wayward, even here, when it's when it's pretty serious, Paul says, "Hey, don't regard that person as an enemy. Yeah, this person's not a wolf. It, warn them. There's danger here. You're going down the wrong path." And so, like that is all of these these verses, and there's more, of course, but all of these verses are kind of help us to think like how, how do we talk to brothers and sisters. Uh, about these issues. And like we said, right, you make the direct appeal whenever you can. You make the public appeal whenever you need to. But we need to be coming alongside each other to help. That, that's 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 the posture. Yeah. Right. Come on. You're not you're not a sniper. Right. Trying to take yeah, somebody out to, yeah, from a distance. Right. Headshot. 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 You're, you're like, no, I'm going in to rescue you. Like that, that's the mindset. Like you're, you're going down the wrong path. I like to think of it like SEAL Team 6. It's like SEAL Team 6. You want to go in there as yeah. SEAL Team 6 and get them out. Yeah. They're not Osama. Like you're not going in the seal to kill them. No, no, you're, you're going, going in to rescue, rescue them you're, and you're get pulling them out, out of danger. Out of enemy territory. Yeah, you get to go get to the chopper. <laughs> get to the <laughs> get to the chopper. <laughs> that wasn't uh, seal. That was seal team Schwarzenegger. That was a different seal team. All right. So and gentleness. Hey, everybody. Yeah. And listen, I need to hear this. Jimmy yeah, are, really needs to hear this. No, yeah, you. Jimmy, I, first of all, okay. For, no. Second of all, you need to hear this. No. Why? Why do I need? it? I'm a gentle person. <sighs> Are you really going to think I'm not? Do you? I could think of environments where gentleness is not the adjective. Gentle would not be the adjective that people would use to describe I you. I think that would say I'm passionate. Okay, passion. Yes. I would say passionate. passionate. I am direct. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, no, I've actually <laughs> seen Jimmy. And this is one thing I love about our elders is I've watched them walk people through dangerous, dangerous territory, dangerous, bad decisions. And they are they're always gentle. And if they have to get intense, if they have to really warn and get there, they'll do that as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, gentleness is a good I'm thing. Concerned for their soul. Yeah, like look out, the rock's gonna the fall rock's on gonna you. Fall on yeah, you. man, you gotta like come on. So people were asking Jimmy, what? Okay, guys, think you could do better? You think you could do better? Like um, you know, like that, that old that old line from Spurgeon, right? Some lady tells him, "I don't like your method of evangelism." And he goes, "What's your method?" Or maybe it was Moody, but it was one of these one of these. Uh, uh, overweight Baptist. And um, so maybe, was it me? No, uh, or me. I don't know. But it wasn't us because somebody, like, you know, used more. Oh, someone m- smarter? Was not, if, not if it was Moody, but somebody that was used greatly by God. Mm-hmm. But um, this lady was pressing in. I don't like the way that you do evangelism. And he goes, How do you do it? And she's like, I, I don't really do it. And he goes, Well, I like my way of doing it better than your way of not doing it. Right. So good, that good line. I like that. And so that's why, like, God will use all of our screwed up yeah. attempts at preaching the gospel and doing evangelism. Good, Amen. good. But people are asking, So, okay, well, how would you do it? If you could do it so much better, why don't you do a documentary? Well, um, uh, th- this is this is part of the problem. Um, uh, God hasn't called me to make a documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not making a documentary, so I don't have a full orbed strategy on how to do that properly. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I can't see problems with a way somebody is uh, is putting a trailer out for a documentary. The trailer was intentionally dramatic. It was it was um, designed. My assessment in watching the trailer, it was designed to stir people up. It was designed. It was. It was dramatic. It was drawing lines. It was yeah. showing these people. It was like, listen, the whole tone of the thing. Like, you know, basically it's like there's a boogeyman in the SPC. And then you get this His dark. His name is Wokeness. You get this dark silhouette of Russell Moore, right? Oh, you know, and it's yeah. like, all right, okay. So uh, we get all, we could, listen, fine. We'll have a whole, hef- not, not on this podcast because we're trying to get away from this stuff. But fine, have a discussion about what you disagree with about Russell Moore. But he's a good godly man. He's a brother in Jesus. Right. So if you think he's airing, let's maybe talk about him. Like he's that, you know, he's, he's not wormwood. Okay. How about mm-hmm. that? Okay. He's, he's not a demon guys. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's approach him like a brother in Christ. Right. And you know what? It's, it's not too scary. Cause he's a tiny man. 
<laughs> Stop. What? <laughs> Stop. Just Why like you, Owen Strayan. I knew it. I knew it. As soon Those are little like, guys. You had little... this little smile on your face like, here comes Owen. <laughs> no, I think I'm going to see him at the conference Good. this weekend. I'm, t- I'm, I'm going to the uh, Normal Pastors Conference this weekend. Mm-hmm. Still time to register. Get the JoJo special. What, what? Half off. I uh, just... Did Wilson approve this? No, well they have to they have to give me uh $200 and then they get half off of uh, their ticket price. So. <laughs> um So okay, so so yeah, uh I so I don't that was part of our problem. Yeah. Right? We didn't like the 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 tone, the the way that it was it was presented, the lines that were drawn. But I think it really the issue is that they it conflated brothers and sisters with false teachers. Yeah. That you mix the two yeah. into this. And they sort of treated them all the same in the trailer, in the trailer. This is why I was hoping, you know, when Tom released that statement, he would have said something like, yeah, man, that trailer was terrible. That was not that was not on the money. You know, well, he did say it wasn't our wise. Oh, no. He talked about the Rachel part, not the wisest editing part there. Okay. Right. He and didn't so, say that about the whole thing. No, I, right. I, if they just would have said, hey, you know what? We, we dropped the ball on the trailer, but I, I promise it's, you. It's going to be better later. Yeah, it's going to be better. We're, just bear we will with be, us. We'll be very, very careful. We're going to take that trailer down. We're going to cut a new one. And, you know, we're going to have some 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 fun Japanese anime and stuff. Make it real cool. Uh, I, don't I don't know what they I would do. I don't think they would do But I do just, think it, that to me would have just, at least this is me, right? Mm-hmm. I would have been so encouraged by that. Yeah. I would have been so encouraged yep. by, you know what? My Done. bad. Done. Done My for bad. us now. Listen, later on, wait, wait till you see it. Wait yep. till you see it. It's going to be different. This is not the tone we're going for. We made a mistake here. People Sorry. Have, it's, you know what? It's, people have to apologize, especially guys like Jimmy. They have to apologize. <laughs> and uh, and that's that's fine. And for the record, I've had to apologize a lot in my life. I apologize a lot. I've had to apologize to people at the church. I've had to sit people down and go, hey, what I did, what the, the way I handled this situation was wrong. Hope you'll forgive me. So we all have to do it, right? And yeah. um, and I, so if that would have happened, maybe, maybe that would have been a better course correcting strategy for it. Instead but, of doubling down? Yeah, uh, put everything put everything on red. You know, it's yeah. like uh, <laughs> it's like okay. So that listen, here's what we're thinking. That these are our thoughts. You know, we don't um, put together Bible studies and and walk you through all that stuff. When we sit down to talk, we jot down a couple of verses and a couple of things we want to talk about, and we con- we converse. Like that's what this podcast is for. Uh, it is a conversational. Hopefully, generally fun for most who listen. Yeah. Uh, discussion uh, about things that we think are really important, tending to focus on uh, doctrine and devotion. And so, this does matter. This th- this whole thing is a mess. It grieves us. Uh, we 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 didn't like the trailer and the way it 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 was creating some unnecessary yeah. division and some needed division. And, and yeah, I mean, listen, we're not guys that you know. There have been some that have said, "Oh, you know." They're upset because we're the people are the uh, breaking the eleventh commandment okay, listen, of the SBC. Listen, we're not insiders. Yeah, they don't want anything to do with us. I have uh, okay. the SBC wants nothing to do with us. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, definitely, the eleventh commandment is a thing in every denomination, in every corporation, and the eleventh commandment. You don't call out the big wigs. You don't call yeah. out the leaders. You don't call out the heroes. Okay, I get that. Yeah. That's sinful and wrong and lame. But that is not what we're doing. And that's not what most of the people that I see Mm -hmm. objecting. Now, again, there are people who hate Calvinism, who hate founders for all the wrong reasons. And there are people that, uh, that don't like the trailer for wrong reasons, but there are also some really good brothers and sisters who take issue with the trailer for very good reasons. So this is our take. And, uh, I hope we were able to clear up some things about, uh, the Jimmy's social media snafu. That was you on today. Thursday. And I'm, I'm not sure um, it, was a snafu. it wasn't a snafu. Not at all. No, we did exactly. I, that's exactly. You, yeah, yeah, you did exactly. Well, except that you had uh, the wrong, you know. Image. Oh, I put up an image because I couldn't get the other one. So then, yeah, but I sent. But, but you know, then, you, got you didn't the send me the image. I no, no, I sent you the link. Yeah, but I had the link. Well, you, well, you but then I couldn't that. get it together. Well, you should have used that better. I, but I couldn't. It couldn't because that actually showed. But now it's fixed. Know. I fixed it. All right, good. Fixed good. It. On Facebook. On Facebook, yeah. yeah and, but I put the link up on Twitter. But I put the link up on Twitter. All right, good. Yeah, I did all that. Um. So yeah. Oh, so there you go. See. Uh, mess that up. Mm-hmm. That, that happens. Um, so yeah, listen, uh, some people, you guys are done with doctrine and devotion. And if, if those of you who are listening to this and you're like, I am done, these guys are total flakes. I don't want to ever, I can't listen to it. Um, thank you for listening for as long as you did. And we, we could, we consider that an, an honor and, uh, don't let the door hit you on the, no, I'm just kidding. No, uh, that'd be, bye Felicia. Yeah. Just, uh, no, listen for, for real. Uh, we, we, we understand, you know, this is, uh, not everybody likes a good 
robust cup of Ethiopian coffee, which is what D and D is. Some of y'all like uh, like you know you who or whatever. So hey, go get your you who, <laughs> whatever you like. Um, so yeah, all that to say, we're um, we're 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 sad about how a lot of this is playing out. Um, and yet we're praying and remaining hopeful that God can actually not only lead all of us through this little kerfuffle, but that God will ultimately lead his church through the various misunderstandings yep. and false doctrines, erring brothers and heretics, so that the church remains uh, healthy and true. And you know what? I'm supremely confident of that because the gates of hell will not prevail against Jesus' church. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter. If you didn't Dr. unfollow Devo us already. Or on Facebook slash Doctrine Devotion. You can head to the website, DrDevotion.com. <laughs> you, you can contact again. us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store. Didn't JoeProStore.com and grab some gear. Fresh pot every Monday and Thursday. Blog post on Wednesdays. Video content on Fridays. Later. Later.